Welcome to a special edition of WSIU in Focus as we preview the upcoming Saluki basketball seasons. I'm Brad Palmer. First up is new women's head coach Kelly Bond White. She's a native of Chicago. She played her college ball at the University of Illinois. She comes to Southern from a very successful Texas A&M program where she was an assistant for 19 years, the last 15 as the associate head coach. The Aggies won a national title back in 2011 while she was there. And she steps into Southern succeeding Cindy Stein, who retired at the end of this past season with a regular season conference title. Kelly Bond White, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. This is your first head coaching job. Tell us why uh, Southern was a good spot for you. You know, just the opportunity to come home. There, there were a lot of opportunities out there. Um, and at the time, uh, Chancellor Lane came down with Matt Kupek, uh, and I was being courted by a couple other people. And when they sat in my living room, uh, they ignored me, you know, originally, and they spent a lot of time with my family. Uh, and I think they were wise enough to know that uh, I'm, everything about me is about family. So having the opportunity to come home, having the opportunity for my family to grow up and my daughter to grow up uh, in a community, a smaller community, which is what I wanted. Uh, and then the allure of the Missouri Valley. I knew Southern Illinois had success with Cindy uh, Stein last year, but the Missouri Valley, just being a basketball conference, I knew we could make some waves here. You almost said Cindy Scott there I because <laughs> when Cindy Scott was the coach here at SIU, she's a Saluki and Missouri Valley Conference yeah. Hall of Famer. She recruited you out of high school, SIU, right? She did. She did. When I was uh, young, I was in middle school, and I was play already playing with my high school team in the summer. And my parents didn't keep very few letters. Uh, the only letters that they have were my first one, which was Cindy Scott and Harvard. <laughs> I think <laughs> those are the only two letters that they kept. And so... Uh, I've begged my aunt to hand it over and she's going to make me a copy of it because she doesn't, they want to keep it in their little shrine of uh, all the grandkids. You have a connection to your uh, predecessor, Cindy Stein. She was on the Illinois staff that recruited you where you obviously eventually went to play your college ball. Definitely. Cindy was on that first staff and uh, we laughed about it my first day in town. Uh, she took me to lunch and kind of gave me the inside outs of the place and actually took me, drove me around town, showed me some real estate. Uh, so it was a full circle moment. Everything was connected. The path was lining up. So I figured this was this was definitely meant to be. The Missouri Valley Conference preseason poll recently came out. Now the Salukis lost a lot of great players to graduation from last season's regular season championship team. And this year's team is picked seventh in the preseason poll. Yeah. Is that fair? What, how would you assess that? You know, I think that's a credit to what you had last year. You had the coach of the year. You had the player of the year. You had a first teamer. You had honorable mentions. Uh, second teamer. So I think uh, what had been established, basketball sometimes happens in cycles. And Cindy had the cycle last year of having a veteran group, some of those COVID kids that had the extra year. Um, now we have some teams in conference that are just like Southern Illinois last year. They're the veterans. They have everybody back. I think we have about three or four teams that bring up to 60 points back uh, a game and we return six. So I, I think from that on paper, I think the coaches picked us about right. There are several players back from last year's team. A lot of them didn't play a lot last year, but one who did is Kara Love. She was yeah. a starter for most of last season. Are you really leaning on her heavily to help you get into things here? Definitely. Q, the transition this summer, we couldn't have done it without Q. Q was somebody that stepped in as a vocal leader. Uh, Cindy had a great culture already in place. So Q kind of stepped in and then naturally her being a point guard, I put a lot of weight on my point guards because they have to be not only an extension of me, but my staff on the floor. And Q kind of accepted that, you know, early on she ran with it. She helped recruit the class that we had coming in. So she's been invaluable to us, not just on the floor, but just in her uh, communication skills and the love she has for Southern Illinois to attract some other players here. Do you see some of these other returning players stepping up and having bigger roles for you this year? I do. Um, A.J. Ketcher was a young lady that was voted captain uh, by the team, and she was playing really well. She's got sidetracked a little bit by some injuries that she'll battle back from, but she's one uh, that has stepped up. Lanaya Randall is a young lady that um, is learning our system, but while she's learning it, Honey, go get the ball. And, and that's something that she can go do. She'll go rebound it, um, and she makes plays. She adds to possessions uh, for us. Let me ask you about the transfer portal. You hit that hard mm -hmm. as you take over the, the Saluki program here. I know one 
player in particular that caught the fans' eyes was six foot five inch Promise Taylor. That, that size around here that we're not used to seeing yeah. uh, in the women's program. Tell us a little bit about her. You know, Promise is a young lady that I've known for a long time. I used to recruit the West Coast, in particular Seattle, Portal, uh, Portland area. Um, and I stumbled on Promise when she was young. I lost her uh, to a coach that's going to roll in here for our first game and then um, with Middle Tennessee. But Promise is a young lady that can change the game just because of her size. Um, she had been out. She had battled through some injuries, and she came in and was committed. Our strength coach, Zach, took her through. She's dropped uh, some weight. She wanted to change her body. She wanted to be able to compete in the up-and-down tempo that we're playing. Uh, we had a scrimmage this weekend, and I think she blocked about eight shots uh, this weekend. So it was just just her presence down low changes things defensively. And once she gets it down low, it's hard to move her, you know, on offense. So our young ladies have been really excited uh, about playing with her. And she's just the gentle giant off the floor because uh, she's a sweet kid, very mature young lady that's been through a lot. So she's a calming presence for our team. Somebody else who has very good size is six foot two inch Tamar Nard. She's a junior college transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, what does she bring to your program with that size? Man, athleticism. Her and Lanaya, uh, they could go over to Coach Jones' track team right now. When they want to run the floor, and I use that word right now, want to until we get them consistent. But when they run that dog on floor, they look good. They look good, and that's where Tamara is right now. Again, another young lady that's been through a couple different systems. So now we're speaking a different language, and she's trying to learn our language and uh, bring it all together. But the universal language of sprinting the floor, she can do that, and that's going to give us some easy possessions. I think another thing that caught fans' eyes is the fact that a lot of these transfers are from major Power Five programs. You've got Mississippi State, you've got TCU, you've got USC. Why did you feel like that was a need to go out and go to these major schools and attract players here? Well, I think one, it was the relationships of me. That's where I've been. That's where my associate head coach, Chester Nichols, has been primarily being um, in, in the Big 12, in the Big 10. Uh, and I think that's with the relationships with the coaches that were in this area, they knew us. And then it's universal. I mean, when you've worked this long, you find people that believe in you. And so some of these kids have seen the glitter and gold. And they're like, you know what, I just want to play. I want to play for somebody that cares about me. Uh, and I think that's why we were able to attract them. It's just our relationships we had with the AAU coaches, with high school coaches, and the success we've had in development of our uh, young ladies. Do you feel that all of the transfers will probably see playing time this year? Are they in your rotation at this point, do you think? They're the same as our returners. You know, everybody has to work for it. When I sat in their homes, when they came on campus, I didn't promise any of them one thing. I just told them they would have the opportunity to work, and, and most of them are. Most of them are, but I think you guys will see this coming week in our exhibition game, you know, what we've been really working towards, and I'm looking to build a good mix of those transfers and returners coming in. They all have to contribute for us in some kind of way. And real quick, you have the transfers, you have the returning players, you have one true freshman on the squad uh, from uh, from the Kansas City area yeah. and Jaden Mason. What, yeah. What's she like? Y'all are gonna love her. She's the baby of the bunch uh, and she's fearless right now because she knows she has 13 other people literally taking care of her. They pick her up from the uh, Thompson Point, they bring her to practice, they drop her off. So she is the spoiled baby right now, but she works her butt off. She's probably the most consistent in terms of coming in for film, and the fans are gonna see a lot of her. Uh, she, she's lightning quick with the ball. She has good lateral speed uh, where she can hound some opponents uh, in the start of the offense or defense, and Jaden's gonna be special. She's special, and she, she really is diehard Saluki already, so that makes it even better, but I believe she'll be a fan favorite. Let's talk schedule. You have a, an impressive non-conference schedule. You start with Middle Tennessee State on November 12th, a very good program. So you jump right in into the deep water, don't you? Right into the fire, but they'll get us ready. The thing that I love about our non-conference is every team that was selected, some were already um, we were under contract with, but every one of them will prepare us for one of those Missouri Valley games. And that's what I'm stressing to our young ladies right now is it's not about November, you know, December. We're playing these games to prepare us for what's coming in January, February, March, and hopefully some April uh, as well. Conference play, wow, Coach, six of your first eight conference games are on the road. That, that is a rugged start to your first Valley season. You know, I want to tell the Missouri Valley, I'm not the only rookie. I'm not the only rookie coach here, so 
Uh, yeah, we, we got a tough stretch, but we've tried to throw adversity towards our kids already. We'll pop up different things for them when they walk in, just trying to create some adversity because we know it's coming. So if we can create it early for them, then hopefully we'll be ready. And we got some tough road trips early on that will also help prepare us. And the non-conference will help prepare us for that, that slate because it is a tough one jumping right into the fire. If you've tested a little bit on it, but what, what's your coaching style? What, what type of team do you want to have? Yeah, I, I want folks to look at us and say, God, they work hard. Man, they work hard. I, I don't know what's coming next, but they work their butts off. They're together. They compete as a unit. They pick each other up. Um, but when you look at style of play, um, we're going to run some secondary stuff. We're going to run primary transition breaks uh, where we get out. We're looking to advance the ball uh, quickly. We're looking for some drag screens to open up the floor that for kids that can get downhill. And then we have shooters on both sides, so it keeps it honest for the big girl in the middle. So it's going to be tough for folks to double team us because we're trying to stretch the floor with shooters and we have kids that can turn that corner and get downhill. Defensively, we're still building our identity there, um, but we want to be hard-nosed. We want to be up the line a little bit and not make it easy for folks to come into Banterra and run their offense. Let's talk about fan attendance as we wrap things up here. Mm -hmm. Historically, the fan attendance has been low for women's games here. Yep. What, are your, what do you hope to see fan attendance-wise this year? I tell you what, my SID department just told me we're probably about 10 tickets away from breaking that all-time season ticket record in program history. Um, so we want to double that. We want to get out. I've been out in the community. I got our players coming out. We're going trick-or-treating. Um, um, next, last week we went out to get some stuff done. We want to be in the community of Southern Illinois. We want us people to know that this is their team, that we're entrenched in this community, so they'll come back out. I want them to get to know Q, as you mentioned, Promise, and then when they come back, oh yeah, that's zero, that's 55. Those kids can ball, but I want them to know our young ladies first, and they become a member of the community, and then they come out and support their neighbor. Well, Coach, it was great to meet you. Welcome to Southern Illinois, and we look forward to the upcoming season. Again, you start November 12th against Middle Tennessee State at Banterra Center, and we look forward to a great season. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. All right. That's women's head coach Kelly Bond-White. When we return, we'll visit with men's head coach Brian Mullins right after this. Donating your old car, motorcycle, or truck helps support public television, and it may get you a pretty nice tax deduction, too. Plus, we make donating your car easy. Just call our toll-free number or visit us online. Welcome back to this special edition of WSIU in Focus, a Saluki basketball preview. It's time to turn our attention to the men's program as head coach Brian Mullins is set to join us. Coach is entering his fourth season as the head coach of his alma mater. He's already had some signature moments in his first three seasons. Seven straight Valley wins, 10 straight home wins in his first season, a 7-0 start to his second campaign, and last season a win over a Power 5 team in Colorado. Coach Mullins, welcome to the program. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Let's start off uh, the Valley preseason poll is out, and you guys are picked third behind Drake and Bradley. Is that a fair assessment of your team, do you think? Uh, I don't know what to take from preseason polls a lot. You know, they're, they're preseason. You haven't played. The, all the teams are new. They got new guys. Um, but in terms of our roster, I love this team. You know, uh, I think it's our deepest roster that I've had in, in these first couple years. I think we got a lot of talent. I think we can play a lot of different ways. And just in terms of, you know, the student athletes in the program, they've had a great summer and fall so far. With what you just said there, is this potentially your best team in, of the four that you've had so far? Yeah, I, I think ceiling wise, you know, we can, you know, play at a very high level. Um, you know, we still have a big step, you know, we got to take. And even throughout the season, we're going to be taking steps to try to be playing our best basketball in February and March. But just the depth wise, you know, we can, you know, everyone on the team is capable of producing, I think, in a college basketball game. You got to see your team in action this past weekend. You played a charity exhibition game at Alabama against the Crimson Tide. A small student-only crowd on hand and a small gym, so you got some live action. How did you come out of that game? What do you, what do you uh, think of your team after that? Yeah, it was a great experience. You know, I appreciate Coach Oates and Alabama, you know, inviting us to come down there and play. To be able to play an exhibition game, you know, against a top-20 team in the country uh, with a student-only crowd where it's very loud. It was in their volleyball gym, which has a lot of um, historic uh, significance. Um, a, a little bit bigger than Davies, so like when you call play, the students are going crazy. You guys, my players can't hear me, and just to be able to have that type of adversity 
in an exhibition game before the regular season starts is, is invaluable. You know, and for our guys to play against that type of team early on, it gives us a lot of great teaching. Uh, it shows how capable that we are uh, of becoming. So I just think overall, you know, it was a great weekend for our program. One great thing for you is you enter this season with two cornerstone players. I mean, Marcus Damask and Lance Jones, they're already 1,000-point scores in their career here. What are your expectations for them this season? Well, I, I think both of them have an opportunity to take another step uh, as basketball players, as leaders, uh, and, and make a big step for this program. They've had a great three years. They've both dealt with some injuries throughout these past couple years, and you know they've really been healthy this summer and this fall right now. So I think... You know, they're excited. They're probably the most excited they've been since they've put in that SIU jersey on. Um, and, you know, I think for them to be able to, you know, along with Trent Brown, those three guys started, you know, with our staff our first year, and now they're all three seniors. And just in terms of where we start as a program, hopefully where we're going as a program, those three guys have a lot to do with it. You mentioned, Trent, you still have uh, several other players who have had experience with you in, in recent years. And uh, J.D. Mula, you've got uh, Dalton Banks, Chris Cross, Troy D'Amico. Are all of them stepping up? Do you feel like they have bigger roles in store for them this season? Yeah, you talk about Dalton and J.D. I mean, Dalton's played a lot of minutes his first two years as a freshman and sophomore. And he's had a great, great fall right now. He's playing really well. He played good in the two uh, scrimmages and exhibition games that we had. J.D., uh, last year was his first year healthy in college basketball, really, and got better and better throughout the season, and he's going to be a huge piece for us. He's a great defensive player. He does a great job offensively being instinctive. And then our freshmen from last year, Troy D'Amico, Scotty Bube, who redshirted, Foster Wonders, who redshirted, those three guys just being in the program for a year, and then, you know, after you're in college for a year, you're just so much more comfortable your sophomore year. Everything's not as new. So usually that sophomore year, you can see a, a big increase in terms of, you know, how how they play and how comfortable they are. What's gotten a lot of attention in the offseason are some of the transfers you've brought in, starting with Clarence Rupert. I mean, people are familiar with him. Last yeah. year's NCAA tournament on that St. Peter's team that made that incredible run yeah. to the Elite Eight. What does he bring to the Saluki program? Yeah, um, a, a winner, you know, a, a guy who only cares about winning. You know, he did whatever it took for St. Peter's. He helped them in different ways. You know, what he does doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. He brings a level of toughness, competitiveness, uh, great energy on the floor. So I think, you know, our, our fans are going to love watching him play. You've got a young man who I know has, uh, has garnered a lot of interest from fans and people around the community, and that's uh, Xavier Johnson from George Mason. Uh, what I hear about him, he's, he's tough, he's, yeah. he's strong, he, he's going to add a lot to your backcourt, it sounds like. Yeah, um, you know, grew up in the basketball family, uh, another guy who's won a state championship in high school, um, and, and just, you know, someone who knows how to play, you know, can think the game. And like you mentioned, tough, you know, he can be one of the toughest guys on the court every single night for us. Um, so I think he also brings a level of toughness and speed. Like he's got great speed in the open court. He can get downhill, get some paint touches for us. A.J. Ferguson, who's from East Central University in Oklahoma, he had a good game for you at Alabama yeah. in that exhibition game. Well, tell us what kind of player he is. Yeah, A.J.'s done great. Uh, he's improved every single day since he's been on campus, since we started in June all the way up until right now. He's played well against Kansas State in the scrimmage, played well against Alabama. Um, you know, he's a 6'6", long, athletic, can make a three, can drive a closeout, has a good feel how to play, is a competitive young man. Um, so, you know, his future is very bright here. As the transfer portal has expanded, we see a lot more, it seems like, in-conference transferring. And you've got one of those in Jawan Newton who comes from Evansville. What, yeah. what fans are obviously familiar with him because we, we got to see him in game action, but what, what does he bring to you? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's our first time, you know, in terms of, you know, taking a transfer from in-conference. And I think with Jawan, just the recruiting process with him, what he was about, he just wanted a chance to win a championship, go somewhere where he could play in the NCAA tournament. And for him, he's played in the Valley for four years. He's, he knows what it is to play at Illinois State, to play at Bradley, to, to, to go to Valpo. You know, so he knows what it takes and what type of grinded out league this is. And, and just for him to come here and, and join us and want to win, uh, he brings a ton of experience and, and great leadership as well. Well, the transfers have gotten a lot of attention. Obviously, the lifeblood of a program is to bring in yeah. freshmen and keep, keep that thing rolling. You've got a couple in Josh Jacobs and a rarity around here in a seven-footer in Kane Horne Kate Hornecker. Tell us about those two guys. Yeah, JR uh, comes from a great program over in Memphis. Uh, and, and Cade, you know, is from Amarillo, Texas. 
you know, his, his high school program was called Floorburn U. So, like, just in terms of what we're about. He was made to come here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His high school coach is a great high school coach. Um, you know, he comes from a winning program, and he's a guy that every single day is continuing to get better uh, as well. And, you know, you really kind of throw Foster and Scotty in that freshman class because they registered last year. So now you kind of got Foster, Scotty, and Cade as, as guys with four years of eligibility. And, you know, it's a really exciting future for the program as well. You mentioned that term floor burn you. That brings back great memories for Saluki fans. You're obvi you obviously were a defensive stalwart as a player here, and you coach that way. How does this team shape up defensively? Is, this, is it where you want to be, or do you still have a ways to go? Yeah, I'm probably pretty hard on the defensive side of the floor, so we're not where we need to be yet, but we shouldn't be. You know, it's October 31st right now. Uh, you know, we, we got some time uh, to get to where we need to get to, but in terms of our competitiveness, our will, and our ability to guard at a high level, this team has all the tools that it takes to be a great defensive team and, and, and you know, to compete for a championship. Offensively, I know you like the ball to move. You don't like it to stick, as yeah. you say. That you have the, the pass, shoot, or dribble in .5 seconds. Yep. Give us your philosophy on why it's so important to keep the ball moving offensively. Well, A, we, we talk about being connected a lot, you know, and when the ball is moving, everyone's touching the ball, you feel more connected as a team, you know, so I think that plays into it. And then on the defensive side, it's hard when everyone's touching the ball and the ball is constantly moving. If one guy is constantly dribbling the ball five, six, seven, eight times, the other four guys can watch that guy dribble. So, you know, I think as the season progresses and teams start to know your plays, if you can teach your guys how to play rather than just a bunch of plays, it's a lot harder to scout. Uh, and we have the capability this year. I think this is the quickest team we've had, the most guys who can pass, shoot, and dribble that we've had. So I'm excited to see you know, how capable of an offensive team we can be. The Missouri Valley Conference, new look this year. Loyola's gone, yeah. your old stomping grounds, and now you bring in Murray State, Belmont, and UIC. What are your thoughts on this new look Valley coming into this season? Uh, it's great for the league um, to be able to add, you know, a Murray State, a Belmont, a, a UIC, you know, to add two programs that are in the NCAA tournament year in and year out and, and to bring the Chicago market, retain that market, to add Nashville. I think it solidifies our league as one of the best non-Power 5 basketball leagues in the country. And, and that's what we want to be. You know, we have had incredible success in the postseason from our league. We've had two teams go to the Final Four. So we can accomplish anything you want, you know, from our league, from the Valley. And I think adding those teams only you know uh, you know you know gives us another opportunity to do that non-conference wise you open up uh, November 7th against Little Rock at Banterra Center yeah. you had a tough game with them at their place last season what, what kind of team will they bring in here this season yeah, a uh, very tough game. Last season, uh, Coach Walker's a great coach. Um, you know, they play extremely hard, very athletic. They turned us over a lot. Uh, they pressed us. You know, we got to be ready to go. You know, I'm excited for our guys. You know, we've been on the road these last two games, and, and to be able to open up at home to play a great program, you know, I'm hoping that we pack the Banterra Center. I hope it's an electric atmosphere. It's the start of college basketball. Everyone's excited. The dog pound has, uh, was, uh, was huge when you were a player here. It's slowly coming back again. What, uh, what would you say to those uh, students, especially who are considering coming out to games this year, about getting them to the dog pound and being allowed? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's what we're known for. You know, I think we have the potential to have one of the best student bodies, college atmospheres in the country. And, and the dog pound, you know, it's just being part of something, you know, that's bigger than yourselves. We talk about that with our guys and our team. And, and to be part of the dog pound, you're going to create memories for your college. Uh, you know, lifestyle for the rest of your life. So I think, you know, if we can pack the dog pound, it makes such a difference. You know, teams do not like coming here. Teams do not like traveling to Carbondale, playing in front of the dog pound. You know, for that first game, you got free T-shirts, towels, pizza, everything you want. So hopefully you can pack it November 7th. Let me ask you a little bit about your family is obviously a basketball family. Your brother's on your coaching staff. Your father is a, a well-known AAU coach. How often do you talk, say, to your father? Do you talk to him after every game? How, how do, close do you guys stay in contact? Uh, yeah, we talk a lot. I mean, you know, almost daily or every couple days and not so much basketball, uh, you know, to be honest. I mean, he helps me maybe with some leadership or relationship type stuff or you know, I got a newborn, how to, you know, father stuff. Um, but, you know, obviously I'm checking in on my mom and dad constantly, making sure they're good. Um, but they're excited for the season. They're a huge piece of our lives. To be able to have Brendan coaching with me is an incredible advantage, something that, you know, we'll remember for the rest of our lives, too. As a new father, congratulations. But uh, has that changed your the way you coach or the time you spend focusing on, on coaching? Uh, not the way I coach. Um, I think it gives me a release from coaching, you know, when I get to go, 
you know, be with Kaysen and be with my wife and you, you take your mind off it a little bit more and I think that's healthy, you know, and, and then you come back refreshed and stuff. So, you know, I think I appreciate coaching even more because, you know, when I do take my mind off, I get back to it. I love it. Well, Coach, thanks for coming in and talking about the upcoming Saluki basketball season. Again, the opener is November 7th against Little Rock. Then you go to Oklahoma State yes. in the first week of the season, so you jump right into to things in a big way. Good luck to the Salukis this season. I know a lot of fans are excited about this upcoming ball club, and uh, we wish you the best. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. That is men's head coach Brian Mullins joining us here on this special edition of WSIU in Focus, a Saluki basketball preview. We also want to thank women's head coach Kelly Bond White for joining us earlier in the program. Again, the women open their regular season on November 12th, also at Banterra Center against a very good Middle Tennessee State team. We look forward to watching Saluki basketball this season, and as always, go dogs.